everybody. This is Samantha with the DevOps Library. We're glad you found yourself here. Welcome to the fourth episode in our Vagrant course. Today we're going to talk about Vagrant provisioning, which will allow us to run Vagrant up and have the entire environment all the way down to the application stack fully configured. First though, you may be wondering what the benefits of automated provisioning are, since it does add some extra work up front. The most obvious benefit, of course, is ease of use. Once you fully automate an environment, every person on the team can bring up a full copy by running a single line. Even more important than that, though, is the ability to repeat and reproduce that automation brings with it, as every single deploy becomes identical. You'll finally get to stop hearing, well, it works on my machine, and it also makes it so much easier to reproduce production problems in development for troubleshooting. You'll even be able to, and should be able to, use the same scripts for spinning up a development environment as you do for spinning up production servers, which makes it extremely easy to test infrastructure changes. This is commonly referred to as infrastructure as code, and at its best can lead to what is referred to as immutable infrastructure. If you're not familiar with that term, it essentially means that instead of SSHing or RDPing into your servers to fix them or deploy a new application, you simply destroy and spin up a brand new server, all completely automated. While we could spend several episodes on each of these topics alone, just know that the upfront time expense of setting up automated provisioning is more than worth it. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So today we're going to pretend that we have a simple website that needs to be hosted with Apache. Hopefully, if you've been following along so far, you've already set up an Ubuntu Vagrant VM, and you have a Vagrant file that looks similar to this. If you don't, just cd to an empty directory and create a file named Vagrant file with the same code. Because it's pretty hard to automate something without knowing how to do it manually, we'll go ahead and install Apache by hand first. Before we run Vagrant up, however, we do need to add one more line to the Vagrant file. Config VM Network Forwarded Port Guest 80 Host 8080 what this line does is automatically forward all traffic from port 80 on the VM to our host on port 8080. That way, once we install Apache, we can access the website at http localhost 8080 without needing to be within the VM. Alright, go ahead and run Vagrant up, followed by Vagrant SSH. If the VM was already running before you added the line above, make sure you run Vagrant Destroy first so that it's recreated from scratch. All right, you should now be SSH'd into our vanilla Ubuntu VM. First, let's run sudo -i to become root. Now run apt get install apache2 to install apache. After that completes on our host computer, let's try to visit localhost 8080 from a web browser. Look, there's the default apache page. That's awesome. Great job. But we're obviously going to want to replace the default index, HTML, with our own page. If you're familiar with running Apache on Ubuntu, you know we could just upload all of our website files to var www.html. But doesn't uploading them every time we recreate the VM sound frustrating and tedious? Thankfully, Vagrant has something called shared folders between the host and the VM. To see what we're talking about, run rm rf var www.html followed by ln-fs vagrant var www.html Now visit localhost 8080 again. What do you see now? A vagrant file? What just happened? Well, the first line we ran simply deleted var www.html because we don't need it. And the second line created a symlink pointing var www.html to the Vagrant directory. That directory is automatically shared between the host and the Vagrant VM and is simply the folder that the Vagrant file resides in on the host. Now you might be wondering, why is this useful to me? Well, instead of using VI on our VM, go ahead and just create an index.html within our Vagrant folder from the host. You can now edit it with any tools that you'd like and the moment that you save it, we can immediately see the changes at localhost 8080. While we're just hosting a simple web page in this example, you can easily do the same thing with more complex applications. It's all up to you. 
Well, we finally have our website configured, but we did have to do quite a few things by hand. It's time to finally get to automated provisioning. Vagrant has a wide variety of provisioners to choose from. You can use anything from a simple shell script to Puppet, Chef, Ansible, Salt, or even Docker for provisioning. We're going to go ahead and just use a shell script for now so that we can get going quickly. Go ahead and run Vagrant Destroy to kill off our VM. Then create a new file named WebServer SH. WebServer SH is going to be the shell script that we use to provision the server from start to finish. And to start things off, we just need to add one line to the top to specify the type of shell to use. We're using bash, so type pound bang usr bin env bash. Now we need to add all of the manual steps we ran to configure the VM. Add apt get install apache2 dash y. Notice we had to add a dash y. The reason is because we aren't going to be able to type yes during the provisioning. So the dash y just tells apt-get to go ahead and install Apache without confirmation. If you'd like to throw in an apt-get update and an apt-get upgrade, feel free to do so as well. That way we have the latest versions of all the packages. Okay, so the last step was to link var www.html to vagrant. So go ahead and add the two lines we ran for that, then save the script. All right, great job so far. We're almost finished. We just need to add a final line to our Vagrant file. So go ahead and type config vm provision shell path web server sh. This line is actually pretty simple. We're just really telling Vagrant to use shell as our provisioner and giving it the path to our shell script. You could just as easily use Chef, Puppet, or a handful of other options as well. You can even use multiple provisioners. Vagrant will just run them in the order that they're listed. Well, let's go ahead and save our Vagrant file. We're finally ready to run Vagrant up. Let's watch the output as Vagrant spins up our new VM. We can actually see it running each of the steps, and once it finally finishes, don't even worry about SSHing into it. Let's just test it by opening up a web browser again and visiting localhost 8080. Look, there's our website, completely configured from scratch without us even needing to log into the VM. While I know our example was extremely simple, deep down it really is the same process for any environment. In a real life scenario, you'll probably end up having Vagrant spin up multiple VMs, each with a different application and configuration. But overall, it's really very simple. I hope you're starting to see the power of using Vagrant, but there's still so much more it can do. In the next episodes, we're going to be introducing advanced networking and how to model complex multi-machine environments. As always, thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions or thoughts, and see you soon.